Okay, um, here's another example of an adenocarcinoma, a glandular epithelial malignancy. This time we're dealing with a prostate gland. So again, uh, what we see in the, in the macroscopic photograph is a, a prostate in which there's this irregular nodularity with quite a pale yellow cream nodules, um, mm -hmm. which are replacing the gland. And on the microscopic photograph, uh, we have here, again, this dramatic nuclear pleomorphism, quite a, quite a, a high grade. And pleomorphism Plus, means? Pleomorphism, yep, that's a term that means multi-shaped, literally. So, right, uh, so, it's a morphic uh, shape, pleo, multi. Exactly, so, uh, and what we're saying is a tumour in which the cells are very variable in size and shape and contour, which is pleomorphic, is likely to be a high-grade tumour, that is, a poorly differentiated tumour. Yeah. So even though this is a prostatic adenocarcinoma, it's not very easy to see glands in this tumour. No. It's actually forming rather ir irregular them? sheets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we have, there's a particular grading system that which... You, uh, the we Gleason. Have, the Gleason, it? exactly. Right. The Gleason system, which is used to, to try and grade tumours in, in this context. Yeah. And then this here, this is connective tissue? This is background connective tissue, yeah. exactly. Okay. So all, all this is carcinoma. You can it's, see it's, it's, it's pretty random, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So yeah. this is where we're dealing with difficulty in terms of recognising the histogenesis, the, the tissue of origin. Given that we're in the prostate gland, we can then you know, assume that, but we can also do marker studies sometimes yeah. to confirm it. It's not always when you, when you take um, a biopsy from a from a particular organ, it's not guaranteed to the tube is not guaranteed to come from the organ. Exactly so. I mean, one of the the challenges, but also interests in tubal pathology, is that tumours may present in, as you say, in, in other organs, and so we we can't assume necessarily their histogenesis purely on where the biopsy has yeah. been taken from. Because they're metastasized, spread from somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then finally, in terms of epithelia, I think we can think about the, the lining of the bladder. We've dealt with squamous carcinoma. We've dealt with the adenocarcinoma. Here's an example of a transitional cell carcinoma. Uh, the, the top uh, right photograph is the lining of a bladder, uh, just to show this, again, this rather lobulated nodular uh, appearance, which is replacing the bladder lining. Uh, and the lining of the urological system is a transitional epithelium somewhere in between, if you like, squamous uh, and, uh, and, and glandular. Mm -hmm. And when tumours arise from this epithelium, we call them transitional cell carcinomas. Right. And there, here's an example. So in this, the lower is, left. this is the muscle of the bladder? This is, this is the muscle of the bladder, yeah. and we have here the, the lining epithelium thrown up into these folds. Okay, so we've dealt with, I think, with a number of the terms around epithelial-derived tumours. Now let's turn our attention to tumours of soft tissue derived from the uh, embryonic mesoderm, as it were. Um, the nomenclature in this area is again potentially fraught with some difficulties, but there are some general rules that we can follow. First of all, let's introduce the term sarcoma. Just as we've said that carcinoma is a malignant tumour of epithelial origin, sarcoma is a malignant tumour of connective, connective tissue origin. And we can often use a prefix that tells us what particular soft tissue we're dealing with. Right. And again, in general terms, uh, here's an example relating to fat. Uh, an oma at the end, so a lipoma, tells us this is a benign connective tissue of fat origin, whereas a liposarcoma tells us it's a malignant tumour of, of, of fat connective tissue origin. Okay. And there'll be similar terms for muscle and for bone and... Yeah. Exactly right. In terms of the general terms used around differentiating types of connective tissue tumour, the principle is that a benign tumour tends to grow in a very smooth, uh, expansile way, whereas a malignant tumour tends to infiltrate adjacent tissues, applies, and also the principles of the cell types and how uh, mature the cell types look also applies. Mm -hmm. So on the left-hand side here, the upper photograph is of a benign lipoma. It's got a very nice, smooth, uniform, lobulated mm. uh, appearance. And the lower photograph is the histological appearance of these mature these fat are, cells. As you bought normal fat cells absolutely, pretty much look like. Absolutely. So the nucleus is pushed off to one side. Yep. The nuclei are pretty indistinct, difficult to see. The, it's just a normal uh, fat connective tissue. Okay. So that's a lipoma. On the right-hand side, though, the upper photograph shows a slightly more variable appearance with some areas of hemorrhage. Uh, the, the tissue plane wasn't so obvious when the tumour was being removed. And uh, this is an example of a liposarcoma. And again, just in general principles, the lower photograph shows a much more variable uh, a pattern of growth, although there is fat to be seen. Yeah, so there's some fat still. There are other cells here which are still lipo, lipoblasts uh, and lipo, cells of the, of the liposarcoma, uh, but this is now a malignant uh, sort of soft tissue of uh, fat 
type tumour, okay. liposarcoma. So um, is, is there a basement membrane to see here, like in the other tissues? No, I mean, we're obviously here now we're dealing with mesoderm, so we don't have those criteria to go by, which makes uh, life very difficult in some times, because there are a number of soft tissue tumours which may have actually quite an infiltrative growth pattern, but in fact still turn out to be benign. Mm. Uh, and there are some tumours that where arguments still rage uh, in terms of whether they are purely a reactive inflammatory process or in fact a, 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 a proper soft tissue tumour. So in connected tissue tumours is one of those where you're likely, much more likely to come across those grey areas where Indeed. we're not quite sure whether it's benign or malignant. And the yeah. reason we're saying that is how it behaves and what we can tell the patient. Indeed. And the reason for all these classifications is what we can tell the patient about prognosis and also plan which intervention to give as an adjunct to surgery often. Yeah. Just in terms of uh, some of the other terms for other, other soft tissue types, as I say, there are exceptions to these general rules, but uh, for fat tumours, we can think about lipoma and liposarcoma being the benign and malignant counterparts of, of, uh, of this mm -hmm. tumour. Uh, and for blood vessels, we can think about hemangioma and hemangiosarcoma. Mm -hmm. And for smooth muscle, uh, the prefix is lio, so it's lyomyoma for a smooth muscle tumour. Uh, a very good example here is the, of course, the um, the uh, uterus, the fibroid oh, yeah. the uterus, and lyomyosarcoma, its malignant counterpart. Yeah, and benign ones can change into malignant ones. They can indeed. Um, a nice example of this is of tumours in the uh, of the nerve system. Uh, there's an interesting condition known as uh, von Recklinghausen's disease, mm -hmm. which is where patients have multiple uh, tumours of, of nerve origin, and these may turn into neurosarcomas, neurofibrosarcomas. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's also a nice example, going back for a moment to uh, the epithelia. Uh, we ought to maybe just mention in the gut, of course, that there's a condition of familial adenomatous polyposis, where patients have numbers of, of polyps, mm -hmm. one of which may turn malignant. So we have... Uh, as you say, the possibility of transition from from uh, from one tumor type to yeah. another. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this is just to illustrate some of the, the concepts we've been discussing. Uh, some some uh, clinical example, as it were, of a young patient who presented with a swelling around the knee, and the radiology showed a. Um, so this is this is a, the plain X-ray. This is the plain X-ray, yeah. uh, and then there's, so there's, there's a scan. A, there's the femur, you can see that on there, and then but that shouldn't be there. Absolutely. So we have this rather sort of fuzzy outline of a lesion which is clearly destroying the outer part of the bone, destroying the cortical port uh, portion of the lower femur, mm -hmm. and is also radiologically uh, dense, which means that it suggests suggest that it's also trying to form bone. And then here's the MRI scan of the same same. Yeah, and showing again see. this destruction of the yeah. of the normal outline of the bone. Yeah. 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 So, in terms of um, for, for those listening to the presentation, uh, to try and think then about, we have here a, a soft tissue tumor which is trying to form bone, and certainly in radiological terms and in clinical terms was behaving in a malignant fashion. So, before we, we move on, maybe to to think for yourselves in terms of what term would you use to describe a malignant tumor of soft tissue origin which is showing bone differentiation. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, just to show you the, the pathology uh, very briefly before we actually give you that term, which here is the resected femur, for obviously fairly radical surgery in this patient. Yeah, so uh, there's there's the top of the femur there, yeah. so it's been taken off sort of a mid, mid thigh, and there's the surface, the, art, the articular, articular surface, surface yeah. of the knee joint from the femur side, and here's... The, the mass lesion. The mass itself. I have to say, I've, I've, I've just point out I've cheated slightly here because I needed to find a similar yeah, tumour, but, but this is, is actually, is tibia. this is tibia. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you might spot Yeah, that. I did. I, did. <laughs> I, I thought other people wouldn't, so I didn't like to say. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's, it is a, a similar pathology. Yeah, and, and so and so what we can see... Is again how it's just destroying the cortical part of the bone as it dis yeah. as it comes up here. Yeah, and it's yeah. coming and it infiltrating all the way through, yeah. isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then... Finally, then, here's the term that we're looking for, which is osteosarcoma. Oh, I got uh, it right. Uh, <laughs> and again, we can think about differentiation in this context. Here's the tumour which is showing uh, the fact that it's trying to form bone. So we've got, again, this rather mishmash of irregular, irregular cells, but the pink material here is the, is the, uh, is the bone-forming component of the tumour. Mm -hmm. It's an osteoid formation. Okay, and no, that looks different from normal bone. Yeah, exactly, and it's, it's not anywhere near the normal trabecular architecture that you'd see. And of course, you'd see that it was, as I say, infiltrating into adjacent soft soft tissues. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks clinically, it looks like a lump. Radiologically, it looks wrong. And then we have a look at the macro of the specimen, 
it, uh, you can see this white thing infiltrating into something that it looks unlike the surrounding tissues, and then microscopically you can see exactly yep. Yep. what the tissue type is, how it's invading, and what the differentiation is. Indeed. Yeah. So that's the whole thing from the patient presenting to you telling exactly what the problem is. Yes. Yeah.